In a world full of VFX and CGI, we know it's the authentic ones that reign supreme. Bad VFX? Well, they get memefied, and nobody wants to be the laughing stock of the internet. So to help you avoid such fate, I'm bringing you 10 simple VFX tips that will enhance your work, making it more realistic. And hey, no one's turning me into a meme, not on my watch. Firstly, an essential tip for those still green behind the ears, always consider your environment and every element within your shot. Now, for instance, you're creating an energy effect while standing on grass. Now, you need to make sure that everything from the grass beneath your subject's feet to their hair and clothes responds to that energy. Create a wind effect using a leaf blower if needed. The same goes for lighting. Now, that needs to be replicated with a real-world light source. And for those things that can be mimicked in real life, like heat waves, well, post-production is your savior. Maxon has a fantastic effect to simulate heat waves and much more, so choose your assets wisely and take your environment into account. Next, a nugget of wisdom I gathered from my own errors. Pick your camera movement wisely, it'll save you lots of trouble during post-production. A still tripod shot, though less dramatic, is a safe bet. But if you're up for a challenge, opting for a moving shot can pay off. Just make sure it aligns with your assets and your vision. If 3D assets are your tools of choice, you've got more freedom to move around. But if you're playing around in After Effects with 2D assets, you're a bit more confined. Meaning that you can't move around them without the audience noticing that they're fake. So remember to think ahead. Now, onto an absolute must-do when using VFX assets, color matching them properly. And I'm not just talking about eyeballing it with Lumetri, I mean do some really in-depth color matching with your color management settings. With this small button right here, you can view each RGB channel individually, enabling you to adjust each channel to a perfect color match. For this, we can use the levels or curse effects. Want to take it a step further, the info panel will give you the exact RGB values or hue, saturation and brightness values of any part of your shot. Just move your mouse over it, so let's say I want to color match this blood spatter, which I again got from the 5 day deal bundle. First, I will use the info panel and RGB values to match the red values of my blood clip with that of the original shot. Next, I will use the hue, saturation and brightness values together with the levels effect to match the shadows and highlights of both clips for each separate color channel giving me the most control over my color matching. Now, here's one about blending your smoke assets like a pro. Gone are the days when you'd use a basic screen blending mode like a VFX rookie. Instead, we'll create an adjustment layer, add a four color gradient effect to it, and then sample the colors from our original shot, and then use the smoke clip as a track mat. Your smoke clip will look like it belongs into the original shot now. Easy. Next up, a handy depth of field tip. Remember, the further away something is, the less contrasty it gets. And with the levels effect, we can easily nail that. Now, for the blur, in my early days, I thought the fast box blur effect was the real deal, but oh boy was I wrong. Enter the camera lens blur effect. It's like a secret ingredient that adds the professional touch, giving you realistic bokeh. Plus, you can use height maps or custom gradients to control the blur. Boom, game changer. On to tip number six. I think. I mean, who's counting? Anyways, it's time to hit the books. You're not going to fool anyone with a lame VFX fighter if you've never seen how fire behaves. Want to show off a gunfire scene? Then buddy, you need to know how muzzle flashes work. First of all, size does matter. Don't make them too small. Next, you're not following your gun. They exist in a 3D space and have their own movement. Something I really find important, always use real-life light sources to mimic the flash of the gunshot. And last, don't forget those pressurized cloud puff assets to completely sell the effect. So remember kids, homework can save your VFX career, as well as some of the amazing cinematography courses in the 5 day deal bundle. Alright, the next tip might sound strange, but bear with me. Add mistakes to your VFX. Now, and I'm talking about natural flaws that exists in real footage, like grain, chromatic aberration, and lens distortion. Once you've added them to your VFX assets, they'll blend more seamlessly. Heck, you can even add extra mistakes like a rolling shutter during gunfire, something you rarely see in VFX shots, but it can add a pinch of authenticity. Though not all mistakes are created equal. You know what grinds my gears? What is it? 
the lack of motion blur when you green key. So in this tip, let me show you how to avoid these hard greenish smears where there should be motion blur. After Effects has several effects to add back that motion blur, like the pixel motion blur effect and CC force motion blur. But let me show you a better one, the refine hard net effect. This effect gives you almost the same options as you have when rotoscoping. You can feather, shift edges, reduce shatter. But why I use it on almost every green key is the motion blur option. It brings back a beautiful motion blur and it gives me a whole lot more extra control over the key that I just pulled. Now, as we sprint towards the finish line, remember timing is everything. And some VFX will just look bad when timed incorrectly. Let's talk about adding camera shake after an explosion. If the explosion is close, shake it like you're in an earthquake. If it's far away, you'll first of all need a delay as the shockwave takes time to reach you, meaning that the camera shake also starts later than the actual fireball that you can see in the distance. Makes sense, right? Now for the grand finale, let's wrap it up with a light wrap. <laughs> I'm not talking about M&M's dropping bars, but the effect of light wrapping around your subject when there's a light source behind them. This is the same when you are creating certain effects, like if there is an explosion behind your subject, there needs to be light from the fire on your subject, a light wrap. And this is easily achieved in post-production. Maxon actually has a light wrap which delivers stunning results, but you can also work with masks to achieve the same effects. Hello, thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, stay creative.